All right, welcome back everybody. So random video idea. I decided to basically go over the blue look. You'll see this a lot when you're scrolling on social media. The problem I have with this, or like not the look itself, but with the approach that people take to it is that they don't know how to make this from scratch. Most of the time, there'll be people that try to sell you a LUT or they'll try and sell you on their course in order to teach you how to do this. And this is a very simple thing and I don't think it should be put behind a paywall of any sort. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open the floodgates and just let you guys kind of pop off with your creativity after knowing the basic fundamentals of this look. So if you want this result that you see on the screen right here, then uh, stick around, let's get started. So we have our four scenes right here, go into the color page and we're gonna be working on these four right here. So let me just recolor these real quick to like orange. So simple thing, color space transform, on the way in. If you don't know what I'm doing, I have another video on this. So just look up color space transform on my page. I briefly go over why we do this and what it's doing. I shot this in S log three. So we're going to do S gamut three cine S log three, and we're going to convert this into DaVinci wide gamut. All right. And then I'm going to copy paste this, invert it, reset these changes to rec 709 changes to gamma 2.4 when they on the way out. All right. We've done the majority of what we need to do, but I'm also going to do a parallel mixer. Connect this to the first node, bring that down, put a third node up there. And this is kind of the basic node structure I do because I like splitting off my workflow into two different directions. My secondary adjustments are underneath and my primary adjustments are gonna be on the top. So I'm just gonna label these for you guys real quick. CST on the way in, CST on the way out. And then everything else in the middle is just where we're doing our adjustments. So I'll usually go over to this node down here and put this density at 0.2. Try and make those reds a little bit more realistic to where I saw it in real life. See, I'm going for a blend of accuracy and artisticness. I like there being some sort of harmony with all the colors. I'm not trying to do the HDR look. We're kind of getting an HDR look right out of the box because of the deep shadows and the very, very nuclear highlights. And we're gonna try and roll that back right now. So I'm gonna go over to the waveform and I'm gonna to go to my primaries wheels because I just love using these things. I've used DaVinci Resolve for a long time. I prefer to use these wheels to do my balancing adjustments. And I'll bring this down and I'll bring this up, bring this up, bring this down, try and find a good medium. The best tool in color grading is your eyes. All right, cool. Now it looks like we flattened the image, but I very much prefer to work with this because you could see our graph down here that the bottom right is becoming more condensed. And then either in the same node or the following node, I'll generate another node right here so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then I'll establish some contrast, but well, here's the beauty of it. So my filmic contrast video, I said to use the spline curves and do this. Once you've done this long enough, you can kind of eyeball it. And there's a third point that some people don't bring up that you can add in the middle where you can just kind of bump this. That brings up the midtones. And as you can see the before and after, we've made a massive adjustment that is much easier on the viewer's eyes than just defaulting this to Rec. 709 and leaving it as is. In these three nodes, we've done a lot. So, and you can see that on our vector scope as well. Everything is becoming a little bit more condensed, which is what I like. I prefer this. Like I said, you guys can do whatever you want. Just showing you how to kind of squeeze the look out slowly. So we're going to set these note two nodes up here. Then we're going to move on to our node where most of the changes are going to end up happening. Now to get this look, usually um, in a more neutral scene, you can just crank down on this gamma right here and crank down on red it goes towards cyan then you could crank on the green and balance for the skin tones and about right there seems good and you can also go to the gain and add blue and subtract red as well if you want to push even more of that cyan in there and you can see the vector scope moving down to the bottom right if I hover over our skin tones, they're still intact. They're still straddling the skin tone line right there. And I'll show you with a qualifier in a second on a problematic uh, shot because this won't work with everything. But the main thing I want to get across here is that this look is just one very, very simple 
good adjustment and then you just get an analogous cover uh, color scheme that just looks fantastic so from here right now that we have the look dialed in and i'm just going to label these two these are the exposure this is the contrast all right cool fantastic then we're going to add my sauce to the end and i like getting an idea of what everything looks like retroactively working from this make the blur radius four Change this to screen and then bump this up. And now you get more of like an ethereal glow. We're gonna add a glow as well to here. I'm gonna bring the spread down so that it's just coming off of the lights. Change this threshold. And like I said in my last video, you could change this to soft light if you want. That is definitely up to you. For, for now, I'm gonna leave this at normal. I'm gonna go to bright region recovery, crank that sucker up all the way, and then blend this in. Why is my Image darkening, let's reset that. There we go. See that glow we're getting off the lights? That's what I want. Want to just isolate it to right there. Oh, fun fact too, if you like zooming in on your image and stuff like this, um, hitting Z resets it. Holding down the control key goes up and down. Oh, and holding down shift and a control lets you go left and right. All right, so we've got, we got the majority of the blue look just dialed in. Everything from here is just gonna be creative adjustments. So if we go to our secondaries right here, we can also go to our color warper tool and we can bring these magentas over here to over towards the oranges it's just a me thing i like there being contrast that's more or less perfect so if we're gonna go with more of a blue cyan then we're gonna make these reds move towards the skin tones but we're not gonna move them so far as to have them look not realistic to what was actually there like I said, this is a very stylized look, so I don't want to go too overboard with it. I think I think I like that. I think we're going to keep that right there. Um, we're going to do our sharpening over here after the sauce node. Bring the radius down to 0.47. Bring the scaling down to 0.17. I'm liking how that's looking. It's it's just, just enough sharpening. Yep. Let's check on... This, okay, cool. So we could go to our contrast node and actually come over here to the curves and bring this low softness up just a bit if we want to. And I think that's perfectly fine. Just bringing it up to there about the high softness. That's not making a much of a difference. We're not going to touch that. And there you go. Then everything you do on top of this is just going to be just creative adjustments pretty much. But there is a couple tools that I do want to include at the end of the video that I would want to show you. But before we get to that, we're going to go ahead and move on to the problematic uh, clip. Yep, we're going to we're going to copy paste this adjustments over to the problem. So as you can see, if we l copy paste this to the other sh clips, we're getting individual problems in these clips too. This grade isn't working with everything in this clip in particular. Um, I'm a bit too dark. And I have a red cast on my skin. In this clip, I think this this over here is very distracting. And on this clip, um, I think my skin tone is off. And I feel like the lights look stupid. So we're just going to go ahead. You know what? Actually, guys, I'm going to go ahead and fix all these right in front of you. So, so you can watch me do it. So in this clip, this is fairly simple. We're going to go to our secondaries over here and add another node. And I know that this is a lot of nodes. Okay, this is a lot of nodes. This is just how my workflow is when it comes to stuff like this. I like everything being isolated. You could condense everything into less nodes. But I prefer to have everything occurring at its own little instance. This is not a case where I'm just making a bunch of nodes for no reason and trying to make you think that I'm doing a lot. This isn't a lot. Let's be real here. There's not a lot happening here. So we're going to go to this last node right here, num node number seven on my secondaries, and we're going to make a radial power window and we're going to bring it down here. And we're going to do the same thing I do every time. We're going to use the compositing mode multiply, which is going to darken everything, but not in a way that it's going to break the image. And I'm going to bring the key output up until that side of the screen is no longer distracting around 0.33 right here. Okay. This clip looks good. This looks fantastic. If I really wanted to, I could also bring another power window. So if I wanted to copy paste this adjustment, bring it on top of me and just change this compositing mode to maybe something like linear dodge. I could do that as well. See, now we're shaping the image out. Boom. There you go. 
And this works a lot better when you're working with ambient light. If you're lighting up your subject, you shouldn't really have to use this power windows to fix the exposure. And um, just to answer the question of, well, Matt, why are you putting the power windows exactly right here? Well, the thing is, is that the signal that is being borrowed from the same origin node is working on a separate path. And I like doing my secondaries all down here then all my primaries all up here and then meet them meeting in the middle right here. It's far less destructive and I've run into less problems that way. That's just my way of doing it. I've never seen anybody do anything like this. I've seen Colin Kelly have like a variation of this, but he has a completely different approach to me and I'm a little bit more like, I'd say a little bit more disorganized, especially when I'm rushing like this, but you know, whatever, teach their own. Uh, okay. So this next scene, same thing as before. I don't find anything distracting in the image. I just don't think I'm bright enough. So I'm going to go to linear dodge and then move this over me and try and blend this to the point that it looks convincing, but not ugly. Bring this down and I'm going to bring this up and that looks fine to me. There you go. That looks, that looks perfectly fine. And now what I'm going to do in the same note is I'm going to actually bring the reds down holding the shift key and then going to this last last exact node right here, a little dot and bringing this down to the point that that red shift on my skin is not that bad. And I can even go as further and add a little bit of green tint just to get my skin tone back. And if I really want to verify if my skin tone looks accurate, I'll go over here and my skin is still biasing towards the red, but it's perfectly fine considering that for the shot, it looks natural. So that shot's fixed. And now we have this last one. This is so bad. We got we got a couple options. So I'm actually probably going to go to my secondaries and go to my qualifier, select my skin, select the highlight option up here and just see roughly where I'm working with. And honestly, I only really want the upper end of my skin tones to get influenced because the shadows don't really mean as much to me. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to increase the blur radius to 25 and I'm just going to try and find a sweet spot. See if I subtract that. Nope. All right, cool. That's fine where we're at right now. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to warm my skin up. And we are getting yellow. Hmm. Add a little bit of tint, add a little bit of warmth. And I think this node is in the wrong spot. So this is a big learning lesson here. So I think that I should apply this node before the look, just before the look. So I'm going to do the same exact thing as before. I'm going to select my skin. I'm going to do this. Fantastic. All right, we have my skin selected. Then I'm going to warm it up and then add a bit of tint to it. Where is my skin at? It's biasing more towards the green. I don't want that. There we go. You can see my skin is coming back. You want to be subtle about this because if I go too far, then it's not going to make any sense because it's still a blue look. I can also blend this too by going to the key output and just probably putting this at 0.7 and leaving it there. And there you have it. We've recovered our skin. And then these lights here are ugly. I hate these. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to select them. And we got a clean selection right there. And we are going to do the same thing. We're just going to increase the blur radius to 25 so that it blends a little bit better. Turn this off. Possibly go to the saturation and bring this down. And I'm looking at my vector scope down here. You could see, you could see a part of the cloud is like, you know, free birding it over here and you, I'm bringing it in. I'm condensing everything. So there we go. Now we have those ugly ass lights are a little bit preserved, but as you can see, it's coming over onto my skin and I don't want that. So I'm going to see if I could get rid of that in here. And would you look at that? There we go. That's much better. Turn that back on. And those lights are, for the most part, aside from a little fringing that I can't do anything about, are changed. And there you have it. And for this particular shot, we can actually go a bit further with the contrast. You can even bring down everything just a little bit. 
and we have what I did. Simple as that. Really hope everyone learned something from this. Of course, I would take a little bit extra time and try and like make it look even better. That's basically how I kind of run through my blue look. There's not a perfect way of doing it. I feel like making a LUT for this is near damn near impossible because uh, there's different environments and different colors and different types of light and all these other things that you have to work around. But to make this easier on you, just remember that having a gray card on you and just getting your color balance correct in camera cuts out the entire color balancing process of this entire uh, process so it saves you a lot of time just that five seconds you take to dial in your camera's white balance means everything um and there is a couple tools that i did bring up from before so what i, I did want to show you guys is that let's go to this clip right here because i feel like this is a good example i'll duplicate this clip and go over here for your color space transform there's a video I found on YouTube where actually I'll link you to the actual like DCTL because I'm a big fan of DCTLs and I'm trying to do these without DCTLs so that you guys that are just starting can go ahead and try to like do this as um, best as you can without using a bunch of stuff that isn't related to DaVinci. But if you understood exactly what I'm doing and you're a little bit more experienced, you might be interested in this stuff. Or if you're new, you want to start off correct, then go ahead and by all means um, check this out. So I'm going to delete my color space transform. I'm going to make a no new node number 10 right here. I'm going to drag a DCTL on. There's this DCTL down here called the JP2499 uh, DRT. This is interesting because the color space transform is pretty intelligent in DaVinci. However, there is more mathematically accurate means of doing the same exact adjustments. So we have the same exact adjustment here. And you can see that the luminance, when I go close, is being handled completely differently. And if you see the vector scope, the saturation is being handled completely differently. I personally like how the this DCTL does the conversion. And as you can see, it's converting it from DaVinci Wide Gamut. This is designed for DaVinci Wide Gamut workflows. And a lot of DCT, DCTLs are in fact designed for DaVinci Wide Gamut workflows. But we are already working in that workflow, so we might as well optimize it. So we have this here. And we also can change the values of the colors going out. So if you have any inconsistencies with multiple cameras that you're working with, you could go ahead and change the, the, the hue. And like just the colors of everything on the way out see so we have blue i can actually change the purity of the blue going out if i want it to be more restrained bring it back if i want it to be a little bit more punchy bring it out that is just a lot of control that we appreciate as colorists this like because the more flexibility we have the better and let's just say on this last note that i left completely empty we wanted to punch the blue look even harder well we're kind of restricted because we only have added some additive means of adding color in the traditional tools in DaVinci, but there is a DCTL called Tetra that I have near the bottom. And I'll go ahead and link that as well in the description. And Tetra is really cool. So this deserves its own video, but to basically gloss over what it does is there are all the colors referenced on these sliders and you're removing or adding the color to the specific color. So if I add red to red, it's going to make those reds extremely aggressive. If I subtract red from red, we're left with cyan, right? Same thing with blue. If we add blue to blue, it becomes more blue. If we subtract blue from blue, it becomes more yellow. And same thing with cyan. If we add green to cyan, it becomes more green. If we subtract, it becomes more blue going around into the magentas. But the best thing about this is that it's not destructive or it likes to veer you away from being destructive. We even have white down here, and because pixels on your screen are represented in red, green, and blue, a mix of all of them, we can actually just push the blue look by taking red out of the image here and pushing blue and then adding green. Now we have something extremely stylized. Now everything in the image is pretty much um, analogous, uh, turquoise, almost blue. But you could do this with so many other different colors and it gives you a lot of control. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and link that in the description and probably this will deserve its own video in the future. And if you guys want me to explain this DCTL and go over just the effects in the color tab, I can start a whole new series on that depending on what you guys want to hear from me. Uh, with that being said, I hope everybody learned some cool stuff today and can take whatever I did and bring that into their own workflow and add value to their uh, footage. And uh, that's it. All right, guys. Well, you have a wonderful day. And remember, ask me questions in the comments if you want me to do anything. Cheers.